This is The Ideation Project, Season 1, Track 9. Is your phone in your hand? Is it nearby? What does it say about us if the most committed relationship we have in our lives is with our smartphone? Think about it. Is there anyone or anything to which you give more time? Any dependency in your life more prime? Recent stats show the average person interacts with their handheld device over 2,600 times a day. What's that doing to your head? It's not a revelation, but there may be a new urgency to the idea that our so-called connectedness is enabling disconnect at its core. In other words, our obsession with not missing out is leading us to missing more. John Lennon once said life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. Well, today life is increasingly what happens while you're staring downward. That is, with a smartphone in your hands. Is this disconnect any surprise when we no longer look into each other's eyes? We've become slaves to our screens and taken isolation to extremes. We depend on smartphones to determine our clout. We built umbilical cords to incoming headlines. We built an addiction to quick serve information. We've become obsessed with our social media drug and a constant fear of missing out. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the iPhone. Even when Steve Jobs created all that buzz with its inauguration, even when Time Magazine screamed innovation of the year to describe the sensation, did we know it would become an everyday essential by decade's end? Is there someone on the subway who isn't gazing down at their electronic friend? Recent surveys show that the typical American checks their phone every 15 minutes or less. Canadians every 10 minutes, and very often we're doing so when there is no specific notification or alert. Gen Xers are more addicted to social media than millennials, so it's not just about youth. An American report released in January shows that 95% of those 49 and younger carry smartphones, as well as almost 80% of those over 50. One third of Americans check the phone during meals. Bill Maher noted recently pedestrian deaths are way up because people are driving while looking down at their devices. FOMO, or fear of missing out, has been a concern in recent years, but nomophobia, as it's also known, is growing. In a crazy world of breaking news alerts, there's a sense we need to know exactly what's going on every second of the day, pushed to us in every possible way. Is this disconnect any surprise when we no longer look into each other's eyes? We've become slaves to our screens and taken isolation to extremes. We depend on smartphones to determine our clout. We've built umbilical cords to incoming headlines. We've built an addiction to quick serve information. We've become obsessed with our social media drug and a constant fear of missing out. Maybe all of this would be less scary if it didn't have implications for our mental health. Today, it's not just about the affirmation of likes and retweets, but the practice of checking social media repeatedly over and over and over to alleviate an anxiety of somehow being left out of the loop. It's about being sold the notion that you're losing ground if you're not right on it. Social media has become an old gumball machine that requires no coins. We just keep turning the dial to receive little sugary rewards that are ultimately an unhealthy addition to our unbalanced diet. Platforms like Instagram and Snapchat are made to hook in the user and induce a feeling of needing more. Your Facebook account may appear to be free, but it's intentionally designed to sell you ads, get you addicted, and keep you scrolling on it longer and longer. A recent Canadian study of electronic devices and our addictions found that almost 20% of millennials felt enough of a reliance on checking their smartphones that it's caused them to miss school and work. The same study showed that adults addicted to the dopamine hits that come with the beeps and buzzes of our smartphones are losing sleep, feeling more stress, paying the price in their careers or social life. Limiting screen time is not only for little kids. Is this disconnect any surprise when we no longer look into each other's eyes? And what are we missing while we dive into our screens? What becomes of our relationship to the outdoors or physical exercise or tranquility? What becomes of longer form information or interacting face to face with other humans? Have we even scratched the surface to understand what it means to be swallowed by the echo chamber of our screens? There are some folks fighting back. Some groups have started gadget free dinner parties and other events where we're forced to put aside our electronic devices. 
there is a movement afoot in some circles to try to slow down our world and the dominance of online engagement. France made news over the last year in banning work emails outside business hours. This needs to be a collective effort, and it's Herculean. It turns out FOMO might be what we ought to fear the most. We need to work at pressing pause. It may appear near impossible, but the next time you have the chance for a conversation, a moment of reflection, or a real-life interaction in your country or town, what would happen if you put the phone down?